Hello and welcome to In Depth. I'm Tina Jha. Meghalaya, which means the land of clouds, is also known to the world as one of the wettest places on earth. But now it has a new claim to fame. The state has a big role in determining the age we are living in, all thanks to a stalagmite found in the Momlu Cave in the northeastern state. Momlu Cave is one of the longest and deepest caves in India. Scientists say conditions here were suitable for preserving chemical science of the transition in ages. Proof of the Meghalayan was found while studying the chemical makeup of a stalagmite in these caves. Based on their study, geologists classified the last 4,200 years as being a distinct age in the story of our planet. They named it the Meghalayan Age, the most recent section of a longer period known as the Holocene Epoch that reflects everything that has happened over the past 11,700 years. Two other new phases within the Holocene, the Greenlandian and North Gripian stages were also identified. In today's In-Depth, we take up in detail what the Meghalian Age is, how did scientists classify the Holocene Epoch and what is the basis on which these classifications are done. Earth's recorded history is divided into eon, era, period, epoch and age. The age is the smallest unit of geologic time. According to geologists, the most recent age in Earth's 4.5 billion year history began 4,200 years ago and has officially been designated the Meghalian age. Why and how? Let's find out in this report. The Meghalian Age is the new phase in Earth's geological history. It is named after a stalagmite from a cave in Meghalaya that helped define the climatic events 4,200 years ago. It all started with a destructive drought whose effects lasted two centuries and severely disrupted civilizations in Egypt, Greece, Syria, Palestine, Mesopotamia, the Indus Valley and the Yangtze River Valley. Scientists say it was likely triggered by shifts in ocean and atmospheric circulation. The name of Meghalayan stage which has been now proved to be a global geostandard. The scientific media is abuzz with uh, uh, Meghalayan stage these days as you are aware. And uh, to be very precise, uh, this Meghalayan stage indicates uh, some 4200 years of Earth's history from the recent period, which we usually denote from 1950. So, um, Meghalayan stage is actually part of the latest uh, history of the Earth period, uh, which we consider to be Holocene, which starts from 11,700 years back. It's a very welcoming news that, uh, that Meghalayan stage uh, now has been, um, you know, officially declared to be part of the international chronostatigraphic chart. We currently live in what is called the Holocene Epoch. This reflects everything that has happened over the past 11,700 years. However, according to the International Commission on Stratigraphy, the body tasked with defining the geological time scale, the Holocene itself can be subdivided. The International Commission on Stratigraphy is the official keeper of geological time. It proposed that three stages be introduced to denote Holocene Epoch's upper, middle and lower phases. The oldest phase of the Holocene, the exit from the Ice Age, will be known as the Greenlandian, which spanned from 11,700 to 8,326 years ago. The middle phase is the North Gripian. It runs from 8,300 years ago up to the start of the Meghalian Age. The Meghalian Age is the youngest stage, which runs from 4,000 years to present. It is also unique because this is the first time a geological time scale change has been linked to a cultural event in this case, the collapse of civilizations. Meghalayan, whose base is defined as 4.2 kilo year event. This 4.2 kilo year event is a cooling event where drought occur in many parts of the world. And the evidence of this drought is recorded from stalagmites from the Meghalayan caves. And that is why it has been christened and Meghalayan. 
In order to classify a geological period, geologists examine sedimentary deposits, ice cores, and deposits below the sea surface to find clues about when dramatic changes on Earth took place. These changes, which can also be reflected in chemical composition, need to reflect an effect that is unambiguous and global in extent. In the case of the Meghalayan classification, this clue was the strongest in stalagmite found in the Momlua cave. In the case of the Meghalayan classification, this clue was the strongest in a stalagmite found in the Momlu cave. Located at an elevation of 1,290 meters, the Momlu cave is one of the longest and deepest caves in India. And conditions here were suitable for preserving chemical science of the transition in ages that an analysis of the stalagmite has now highlighted. Period is 4.2 kilo years onwards. And what is the reason? Because at 4.2 kilo year precisely, you discover the cooling event, which is correlatable with the droughts all over. So that is why it is 4.2 kilo year. Well, as you know, the civilizations have grown uh, on the banks of rivers, many civilizations. If you look at even in India, you have the oldest city of Benares, it is uh, bank of Ganges. Likewise, we had Indus Valley civilization. These civilizations used to flourish uh, on the bank of rivers because of the accessibility to the drinking water and also the water for agriculture. So whenever such climatic events as Meghalayan, which is a drought event, they occurred, the civilizations were affected. Dividing the Holocene into more detailed portions was first proposed in 1977, but subsequently rejected by the scientific community. In 2011, a working group was formed to look into the issue once again and reconsider the previous negative verdict. The group subsequently recommended approving the categorization of the Meghalayan age according to the International Commission on Stratigraphy. The decision was also backed by the International Union of Geological Science. However, some scientists claim the latest classification is premature. Their argument stipulates there must be indubitable evidence that the event was a planet-wide change. Concerns also exist of the proclamation of the Meghalayan age when there is still such vociferous debate over the Anthropocene, the concept formulated by Nobel laureate Paul Crutzen in 2000. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Scientists have carried out extensive studies and research to arrive at the Meghalayan age that has been determined from the Holocene era. Let's understand the long geological process to arrive at this point. You can't tell the age of a rock just by looking at it. So how is the age of a rock determined? Scientists use the geological age dating method for this purpose. It helps in calculating the age of any rock to determine its history. Along with this can be determined the Earth's past, including the breakdown of continents and even the climate change. The study is called geology. Scientists carry out various researches like telling the age of an era, information about a particular period, gathering information about a rock and other major incidents. Based on this calculation and research, the present age is called the Meghalayan era and its time has been calculated from 4,200 years ago. The International Commission on Stratigraphy has approved the introduction and definition of the smallest unit of the geological time scale. It has also approved the proposal of two other eras, the Middle Holocene North Krupian era from 8,300 years to 4,200 years and Early Holocene Greenlandian era from 11,700 years to 8,300 years. All these ages are considered the Holocene era, which is the time after the Ice Age. By International Subcommission, International Commission on Stratigraphy, into Greenlandian, North Gripian, and Meghalayan. Every interval is defined by its base. So Holocene base is the base of Greenlandian also. And it is defined as the end of 
a cooling period known as Younger Dryas. After that, Greenlandian, we have North Grippian. North Grippian base is defined as 8.3 kilo year cooling event. And after North Grippian, we have Meghalayan, whose base is defined as 4.2 kilo year event. This 4.2 kilo year event is a cooling event where drought occur in many parts of the world. And the evidence of this drought is recorded from stalagmites from the Meghalayan caves. And that is why it has been christened and Meghalayan. The geological time is calculated by examining rocks in Earth's sediments. These rocks contain gaseous and chemical isotopes that produce physical and biological phenomena over time. These three new ages of Holocene era are determined by studying the deposits and other substances in the rocks found in the sediments. It includes rocks on the ocean floor, ice and calcite layers. The three new phases of the Holocene era are together called the Holocene series. The lower limit of the Greenlandian and North Grippian phases is defined as the Greenland ice core, while the lower limit of the Meghalayan phase at the international geological level is recognized as the Meghalayan era. To be very precise, uh, this Meghalayan stage indicates uh, some 4,200 years of Earth's history from the recent period, which we usually denote from 1950. So, um, Meghalayan stage is actually part of the latest uh, history of the earth period uh, which we consider to be Holocene which starts from 11,700 years back. After discovering these new phases of the Holocene series, the international chronostratigraphy chart has also been updated which reflects the history of the entire geological timeline of the earth. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. The Holocene is the current geological epoch that started some 11,700 years ago when the glaciers began to retreat. Although we think of the Holocene as a warm time for the planet, we are still in an ice age. This is indicated by the presence of ice caps at the poles. The planet as a whole is just an interglacial phase. Let's understand the Holocene epoch better. Several myths and beliefs surround the first birth of a human being. Different cultures and societies have their own versions of how human life first came on planet Earth. Even scientists have not reached a concrete conclusion about it. During prehistoric times, humans struggled with nature to survive on Earth. The instinct for survival came naturally to them. Early humans also had no understanding of how to communicate using words or texts. With time, they began to draw or sketch on stone and inside caves. These drawings helped in decoding the life they led. These sketches were discovered after almost 5,000 years in Mesopotamia and Harappa civilizations. Many bear pictographic inscriptions generally thought to be a form of writing or script. Despite the efforts of philologists and despite the use of modern cryptographic analysis, the signs remain undeciphered. On the other hand, geologists began to study the coexistence between humans and Earth. And for this, the Earth was divided into many ages. This timetable of Earth is called Prehistoric Almanac. It is divided into several eras. Geologists divide the 4.6 billion year existence of Earth time into eon, era, period, epoch and age. Well, uh, it's a pride for us. Like this has been given uh, the name of Meghalayan stage, which has been now proved to be a global geostandard. Some 4,200 years of Earth's history from the recent period, which we usually denote from 1950. So, um, Meghalayan stage is actually part of the latest uh, history of the Earth period, uh, which we consider to be Holocene, which starts from 11,700 years back. 
In the geological history, the current and most recent of the three Phanerozoic geological eras is the Cenozoic era. The Cenozoic is internationally accepted as the youngest of the three subdivisions of the fossiliferous part of Earth history. It is divided into three periods, the Paleogene, Neogene and Quaternary and seven epochs, the Paleocene, Eocene, Oligocene, Miocene, Pleocene, Pleistocene and Holocene. The Quaternary spans the shortest geological period in the Phanerozoic eon. It features modern animals and dramatic changes in the climate. It is divided into two epochs, the Pleistocene and the Holocene. The Holocene began 11,700 years ago and lasts to the present day. Sediments of the Holocene, both continental and marine, cover the largest area of the globe of any epoch in the geological record. But the Holocene is unique because it coincides with the late and post-Stone Age history of mankind. The International Commission of Stratigraphy proposed that three ages be introduced in the Holocene epoch. The early Greenlandian age which began about 11,700 years ago, the middle North Gripian age which began about 8,300 years ago and the late Meghalian age. Meghalian is the last stage of Holocene series. In time connotation, Meghalayan is last stage of Holocene epoch. The Earth's time scale is divided into several intervals. Okay? And out of these, the latest era of Earth, that is Cenozoic era, is divided into several epochs, out of which Holocene is the latest epoch. And Holocene has been divided last month by International Subcommission, uh, International Commission on stratigraphy into Greenlandian, North Gripian and Meghalayan. Every interval is defined by its base. So, Holocene base is the base of Greenlandian also and it is defined as the end of a cooling period known as Younger Dryas. The onset for the Meghalayan age was an abrupt cooling attributed to vast volumes of fresh water from melting glaciers in Canada running into the North Atlantic and disrupting ocean currents. Bureau Report, Rajasabha TV. And let's now look at human evolution. How man evolved from being a single entity to building up a civilization and transforming into various tribes. When we talk about human evolution and civilization, the first question would be how did human beings come together? Scientists broadly agree that man by nature is a social animal. But how did we become social? Researchers believe it was a gradual process evolving from couples to clans to larger communities. And it all started with hunting. Along the way, conditions of life changed driven by technological, medical, communication and education changes which themselves involved global cooperation and collective actions. Social interaction was a positive endeavour that became even more enhanced once permanent communities were established. Either out of protection, security or hunting success, humans discovered the benefits of social interaction and cooperation. As you know, the civilizations have grown. Uh, on the banks of rivers, many civilizations. If you lo look at even in India, you have the oldest city of Benares, it is uh, bank of Ganges, likewise we had Indus Valley civilization. These civilizations used to flourish uh, on the bank of rivers because of the accessibility to the drinking water and also the water for agriculture. So, whenever such climatic events as Meghalayan, which is a drought event, they occurred, the civilizations were affected. Earlier, we did not have that much of transport mechanism to transport people from one place to other. So, the civilizations used to suffer and sometimes even perish. The other reasons of the civilizations have been wars also. The major wars also, people used to die. 
but since i am a geologist i will focus mainly on the geological causes of civilization chronologically the earth is thought to have been formed about 4.6 billion years ago but the history of life on earth started 3.8 billion years ago humans are believed to have originated from ape like ancestors about 30 crore years ago it is generally accepted that humans like the great apes existed 6 crore years ago then 5.5 to 1.5 crore years ago the presence of australopithecus or the southern ape was discovered ramapithecus and sivapithecus were discovered in the shivalik hills of the indian subcontinent about 2.2 crore years ago Homo habilis appeared about 2.5 millennium ago whereas Homo erectus appeared 1.8 to 1.5 millennium ago. The period also saw the discovery of the stone axe and fire. Meanwhile, our own species Homo sapiens appeared about 2.3 lakh to 30,000 millennium ago. Then came the quaternary period that lasted from 2.6 million years ago till the present day. The quaternary covers the time span of the Pleistocene age and includes the present interglacial time period, the Holocene. If we talk about India, the cultivation of plants started from 7000 to 6000 years ago. 5000 years ago, the first evidence of animal husbandry was found. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. And that's it from us in today's edition of In Depth. We'll be back same time tomorrow with a focus on another subject. You can also watch our episodes online on YouTube and Twitter and get back to us with your feedback and suggestions. Thanks for your time.